Hey folks, so I did town-wide yard sales and uh, also bought some stuff at auction. Uh, the town-wide sales, there was 102 sales. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of them were kids clothes and uh, baby clothes and that sort of stuff. So I didn't get a whole heck of a lot. Um, it went to about 50% of the sales, so roughly 50, 60 sales. Um, but, uh, like I said, didn't get as much as I had thought I would. I did get some neat stuff, though, so uh, stay tuned. And I also left eight bids at auction and got five of the lots. Um, I attended the auction briefly a couple times. Uh, I basically came home at about 11 o'clock in the morning and opened up the shop and uh, did wander over to the auction uh, after five o'clock and it ran until oh seven or eight o'clock at night um, it was about i think about eight thirty or nine o'clock by the time it was all wound up and uh, everybody was paid up and that sort of thing so yeah it was quite a long sale it went from 10 to uh 10 to about 8 10 a.m to 8 uh preview well it started at 10 anyway so, here's what I got at auction. Uh, first of all, it's this sign. Uh, I picked this sign years ago and ended up leaving it behind when I moved. And the new owners put it in auction. The other antique shop bought it. So, I bought it back in that sale uh, yesterday. So, yeah. Um, like I said, the sale was a liquidation of an antique shop in town here. Uh, the couple retired and uh, got out of uh, the business, so they liquidated everything. And also got this sign uh, light. It's meant to go on a pole to light up both sides of a double-sided sign, similar to this idea, or a uh, station sign, a gas station sign, that sort of thing. It's possible it was even used in town here i'm not not sure but i think this is that's where it was used but anyway uh also got a bunch of calendars um got a whole raft of them never out of the package most of them and i'm pretty sure they're all the same calendar though uh they're brantford twine um very difficult to open with just one hand here but they're from 1957 for the Brantford Cordage Company Limited. And the picture on them, I don't think I'm going to be able to show you. But uh, anyway, Brantford Twine and Rope. Oh, there we go. Anyway, it's a picture of a steamship or a ferry moving along the uh, coast. But uh, yeah, so anyway, I've got a whole bunch of them. Like I said, paid $60. I got two... Let's see, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven of them for sixty dollars. So that's less than six dollars a piece. So I did all right. And paid twenty for this whole bin of hardware. I spotted a few knobs and such in there, so I assume there's gonna be some decent hardware in there. And as well got this Anglo gas can for Twenty Anglo was a uh, station here in Western Canada, and uh, they had their uh, refinery in Brandon, Manitoba. So that was the five items I got in the sale. So I'll show you the some of the stuff I got from garage sales. A uh, piece of Pyrex, just a gravy boat in Crazy Daisy is that pattern. That's what it's called, and it was a whole dollar. Um, I did go to sales Friday evening and got a few things. Uh, this little red dish is one of them. I'm not sure what maker it is, but it was a buck. And it is kind of mid-century modern, so that'll go for probably 20 or something like that. Uh, then yesterday, the Saturday, I got uh, these three area histories at five bucks a piece. And considering they're 25 to 65 dollars, I'll do just fine on them. And then got this Handbook of Petroleum. Uh, 
published in 1898 or 1899, something like that. So a nice early book on uh, oil wells and such. Um, this sort of stuff pops up in this area because it is oil country. And then on, again, the Friday, I picked up a box of gun books. So don't know exactly what type of contents they are or how old they are, but uh, I did look up these ones and they seem to be running anywhere from 10 to $30 US a piece. So I did find it $5 for the box. <laughs> So yeah, I'm not sure how old these ones are. I suspect they're maybe 80s. Oh, maybe not. Maybe earlier. Oh no, 70s. So 75. And they basically have the exploded views of uh, various Remington uh, rifles and such. So yeah. But uh, so those are kind of cool. And there was a Savage Arms one. I think it's fairly much newer. Yeah much newer um, and again got the exploded views of the guns and I didn't look in all of them oh we've got some literature oh archery clothing and knives so I guess this is no I guess this is just a binder with some of the well there's some literature so maybe maybe there's some value in it in this literature I don't know I'll have to check it out some of it's fairly modern so it might just be garbage um or something to keep for a while maybe we'll see so yeah i got those and there was a so one here so gasoline inventory control i don't know whether that's what's in there or not i didn't look terribly hard at five dollars i just grabbed the box so let's see what's in here parts catalog marlin lakefield ruger oh okay so we got more parts a more uh, more of a catalog here looks of it oh we got a Winchester component parts catalog so I should do just fine on uh, on these yeah that's what it is is more parts and oh we got a whole bin of oh a whole bunch of uh, literature here Winchester so probably 70s maybe 80s stuff i'm sure there's some value in some of it uh we'll have to get looking online and see what what sort of stuff there is uh here's a brochure from remington dupont there's this instruction book for a model 870 shotgun so there's probably some value there so yeah i'm sure somebody with that gun wouldn't mind having the original manual for it so that looks like what's there. Um, yeah, anyway, so there's some of that, and I'll, I'll dig out some of the other stuff. Okay, so we also got, or I also got, the wrought iron table for $10. Uh, well, I picked it up after, I noticed it's got a little chip in the glass, which is unfortunate, but that's life. Uh, ET puzzle I was not buying much that was Friday and it was a quarter so I figured well why not and also some dance candles for uh, little cast iron candle holders they're these thin tapered type candles I don't know if you can see them in there but uh, yeah so they're for the Danish candle holders and then on Saturday got a tractor that cost 10 bucks missing the uh, exhaust but still it's got steel rims on the back so it's a little older rather than the plastic rims so I don't know 80s or 70s something like that I suspect probably made by Ertl or one of those companies so haven't looked it up yet um, talking about looking stuff up I did look up that uh, red glass divided dish it turns out it's worth about 45 Canadian so made by Viking glass so kind of a neat neat or uh, positive find there uh, got a fishing reel for a couple bucks uh, this one was uh, a 
pen peerless number nine and a couple frames just for paper stuff uh let's see oh uh bakelite handled cheese cutter uh, i've got a horse lamp this is somebody's upcycling job because they put a uh, chunk of broomstick in and nailed the uh, shade to it so i've got to replace the bulb holder in there i've got to put a new, another bulb holder in there rewire it and put a bulb in hopefully the socket's still good though too but uh, i do have a spare one and does have some bending here unfortunately but it was five bucks so i've got the technology to bring it back to life and fire king casserole for a couple bucks a 10 cent find a uh, little donkey and cart made by mcmaster pottery is more than likely yeah there it is the label uh, i've got a local collector that actually collects donkey and carts so i'm gonna offer that to him and a candle holder they're made in germany uh haven't looked up the mark but i'm uh, not familiar with it but could be something um although a lot of this china ware has fallen out of favor so who knows but it is a little more unusual so maybe it'll have some value but at 75 cents i figured i'd take the chance and a quart bottle from suncrest and uh, that was five bucks uh, we've got a calendar from W.J. Morris and Sons from uh, Bertle and Fox Warren, Manitoba. And it's got a scene on it called Lake in the Foothills. Some of these scenes used to be worth some money on their own, but uh, that's kind of, they've since kind of fallen out of favor as well. Uh, but anyway, just local advertising still cool. Uh, for a buck, there was farm record from UGG, United Grain Growers. So I've got uh, three of those in the box. I've got another calendar from uh, Red vs. Saskatchewan, J.W. Hutton, coal flower feed and fence posts, and a livestock shipper. Kind of a neat, uh, <laughs> neat line of stuff that he uh, dealt in. With advertising for Robin Hood flower and got a gal on it with puppies who doesn't love a puppy hey okay? come on look at that anyway uh, and then also got these little cupies made in Japan but they're still cupies so they're kind of cool uh, they were a dollar so a dollar for all four of them so there's two the same one different and then a Kupi, um probably the German one rather than Japanese, but uh, got a kind of Kupi doll with loose arms there. And then, let's see, we'll take the Kupis out here. And I got a couple paint trays for a quarter. Um, I figured I could make one semi-decent one out of the two because the paints are kind of used up on on them but uh there's a, kind of a nicer condition one underneath that needs some cleanup but uh figured for a quarter why not and also got a register grate for five bucks so that was all right should do about uh, 35 on that anyway so that's it folks thanks for watching please be sure to like and subscribe and check out our other videos on antiquing picking thrifting scrapping etc take care folks